If you're into mobile PC gaming, then you probably noticed there's quite a few people with the Asus Zephyrus G14. Now this laptop was given to me, but everything that I'm about to say is based on my own thoughts and opinions. This configuration that we have here for you includes an AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS CPU, a 4060 GPU, 16 gigabytes of 5200 megahertz DDR5 RAM, and a 2880 by 1800 120 hertz OLED display. We're gonna take you through our experience with the design and build quality, the internals, thermal imaging, display quality, sound quality, gaming and creator benchmarks, and even a few accessories. I'd like to thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video. Even before I became a tech YouTuber, Best Buy has always been my go-to for anything tech. This is our thorough breakdown of the Asus Zephyrus G14. All right, now let's rewind back into the past real quick and check out the unboxing. Inside this box, we've got another tall and skinny box. And in here is our power adapter. Although this power brick is fairly small and slim, you can see it's actually pretty powerful, capable of 180 watts. I really do appreciate them putting the main laptop box within this larger box for extra protection when it comes to shipping. We've got some pretty cool and clean reflective designs on the box. That's fancy. Let's put that to the side real quick and check out what else is in the box. We've got some pretty obvious quick start instructions, a user manual, and some more documentation. First impressions of the design so far, I know it's simplistic, yet somehow I think it's bold at the same time. The accent of this LED slash on the back is a unique feature that looks really cool when it's animating, especially in the dark. It's thin and light, yet somehow feels very sturdy and strong. And I definitely appreciate all metal designs on laptops. These are some impressively big keys for a 14 inch laptop. The key presses are also very solid, and we've got a massive touchpad that goes all the way to the edges. To get to the internals, removing the bottom panel requires you to remove what looks like nine screws, but after bending the back and seeing it wasn't coming off, I realized the little rubber nubs at the top actually had two more screws under them as well. Inside, you can see we've got three fans and a few heat pipes, our solid state drive wrapped in a thermal pouch. The one they gave us is a Micron 2400E one terabyte drive. And when we tested it, we got speeds of five gigabytes per second read and 3.6 write, which is pretty fast. And taking up the bottom third of the entire laptop, a 73 watt hour battery and the RAM, which is actually on the other side of the motherboard, I found out that's actually soldered on, so it's not upgradable. For the ports on the right side, we've got a micro SD card reader, a USB-A and a USB-C with DisplayPort 1.4 capabilities, and then on the left side, a headphone and microphone combo jack, another USB-A, and this one next to it, the new USB 4 Type-C, also with DisplayPort 1.4. This port can also be used to power the laptop and also push power from the laptop to another device. Then we've got a full-sized HDMI 2.1 port, and then lastly, your power port. We've actually got zero ports on the back. That's all gonna be dedicated to ventilation, and we're gonna get to that here in a sec. For the software, the main program you'll be using is the Armory Crate app. On this homepage, we've got a bunch of CPU and GPU stats. Then you can adjust your fan presets in the bottom left, depending on whether you're looking for a quieter PC or prefer better cooling and better performance at the expense of a louder PC. Then on the right side, we've got your GPU mode. Again, we left this on ultimate because our tests are not done in battery mode. And then slash lighting is where you can customize that cool matrix LED strip on the lid with some pretty cool animations. The RS Sync section is where you can customize the RGB lighting for the keyboard, but you can also use quick hotkeys to cycle through these on the fly. There's hotkeys to cycle through the fan profiles too. And then we've also got an update center where you can periodically go and get the latest drivers. And then using infrared facial recognition, this computer also allows you to unlock it with your face, which was really easy to set up and has a much, much quicker response time than any fingerprint reader that I've used. For the webcam, I'd say it's about average, about what I'd expect in this price range. And this is what the webcam video and audio looks and sounds like. Now the sound quality of the speakers was actually incredible. The best sounding gaming laptop that I've ever heard. Pretty much just as good as my wife's much more expensive MacBook Pro. I was pretty blown away with how loud a 14 inch thin laptop could sound as well. We got up to 79 decibels with our tests. 
As far as the quality of the display goes, there's not much better that you can get than an OLED screen. I expected this to look great even before I tested it. The colors looked absolutely stunning and the contrast was pretty much perfect considering when things were black, they were completely black. Unlike my LCD laptop where you can see a completely black screen actually looks washed out and bright, especially in the dark. And with a high resolution of 2880 by 1800, everything looked super crisp and sharp as well, even at extreme viewing angles. For the motion and smoothness, I actually don't notice that much past 120 FPS, so 120 hertz refresh rate was plenty smooth to me. Basically no motion blur when we ran the UFO test. When it came to the fan noise, I actually have never heard a quieter gaming laptop in performance mode. 40.5 decibels is very quiet in a room with below average ambient noise. And then a bit louder with the fan profile set to performance mode while gaming at a little over 48 decibels. And then in turbo mode for extreme cooling during intense gaming, we got about 53 decibels. Which that can be kind of loud, but game sounds always overpower that. And that's honestly really the only time that you'll see a benefit from turbo mode. For the thermals, you can see in this thermal imaging time lapse from the moment the computer was turned on to when it was fully engaged in gaming where the majority of the heat lies. The keyboard was actually cooler than most, and I appreciated the very minimal heat coming out the sides where my mouse hand usually sits. The majority of the heat escapes out the back, and you can see on the bottom that it's not too hot to put on your lap either. Just make sure that you don't have anything blocking the back and make sure that you have plenty of room for airflow underneath. We did a lot of in-game testing as well, and these were our CPU temperatures at the three different quality presets that we tested for each game. I honestly expected them to be hotter for such a thin and powerful gaming laptop. And these were our GPU temperatures. A little hotter than the CPU overall, but still not that bad. As far as the actual performance, for creators that do a lot of 4K editing, you can see that even at 4K and Premiere with multiple layers, we got less than four minutes to export a full 10 minute video, which is pretty good. Scrubbing in the timeline was super smooth as well, but 4K did lag just a little bit. Multi-layer 4K playback was smooth in both DaVinci and Premiere, but scrubbing in 4K and DaVinci lagged just enough to where I'd recommend creating proxies first. For gaming, you can see that we got some fairly high average FPS for each game at low graphic settings, and then even at the highest graphic presets, the only game that did not come close to that baseline 60 FPS was Cyberpunk. But then when turning on AMD Fidelity FX super resolution 2.1 even high settings was almost in that 60 fps range overall these graphics are comparable to an xbox series x but a laptop can do a lot more and it's also got that beautiful oled display this would also work pretty well for pc vr you'll notice a bit better graphics than what your quest 2 3 or 3s can do by itself but the biggest advantage to connecting to pc vr is getting access to that massive pc vr game library for the battery life with hd video i got five hours and 15 minutes in my test eight and a half with the computer idle and it took about 25 minutes to recharge back to 50 percent and one hour and 40 minutes to recharge back to a full 100. i also requested from best buy two of the most popular controllers the scuff envision pro and the xbox elite series 2 core and then i also got the xbox elite series 2 complete component pack because the xbox series core does not come with the paddles on the back i also love that easy charging case that comes with the component pack both controllers have been great but there are a few key differences the Xbox can be used on the PC, Xbox, and mobile, while the Scuf can only be used on the PC. The Xbox has about 40 hours of battery life, the Scuf has 19. Xbox uses Bluetooth, the Scuf needs a dongle. The Xbox controller also comes with this little tool that lets you choose between three different thumbstick tension levels, but honestly there wasn't a huge difference between them. All of this makes it sound like the Xbox is better, but in actual gaming on a PC, the clear winner is the Scuf Envision Pro. The Scuf has seven more mappable buttons than the Xbox. Xbox, but what puts this controller above all the rest, every button feels so much more precise because they have the same mechanical actuation as a mouse click. They even sound like mouse clicks. Both have the ability to set long or short trigger sensitivities, and all the buttons are very easy to map within their apps, and customizing profiles was also nice. But there's just something about the way the scuff clicks that actually makes me play better. But honestly, both made me play better because the added buttons ensured that I could keep my main fingers always 
shooting, always aiming, and always running. While my other fingers can handle jumping, crouching, item pickups, reloading, grenade throwing, and other special actions. Overall, I'd say that this laptop checks all the boxes for someone looking for good performance in a thin and compact design, and for someone looking for great sound quality. And as of right now on Best Buy, it's priced pretty well. If you do plan to purchase this PC, then please remember to use my affiliate links in the comments and description below, or this QR code if you're watching on a TV, as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made using my links. And it's actually a major factor in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. Also make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with all of my latest tech and gaming PCs. Thanks for watching. God bless.